Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you again. We're here uh, at home, but sort of also at the Ballard Institute. Um, today, we are going to be doing our very first steam in puppetry uh, workshop, and this is really exciting. Uh, my name is Felicia Cooper. I'm the graduate assistant at the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry, and I am a graduate student, an MFA candidate at the uh, Yukon Puppet Arts Program. Um, and I'm just really happy that everyone's here with us today. Um, this is a culmination of an independent study that I've done um, with Dr. John Bell in STEAM education in puppetry. It's something that's really exciting to me and something that I've been uh, thinking about for a while as I've been uh, a teaching artist in different make shops and stuff like that. So let's get started. Um, I really like to start off any creative session that I'm doing, especially if I'm doing it with other people, just by like stretching a little bit. So maybe let's reach up as high as we can, a little higher, and then go and touch your toes. Oh, roll up, little vertebrae by little vertebrae. Oh, maybe. Sh Roll your shoulders, get your wiggles out. <laughs> and now we're gonna do our three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Last one. Ooh, I feel ready to make stuff. Okay, great job. So just to warm up and keep warming up, the first thing that we're going to do today is a speed sketch. And today's theme is all about going from two dimensions to three dimensions or three dimensions to two dimensions uh, is a good place to start thinking about that. So if you've got newspaper, like, like I said, luckily I have a ton of the daily campus uh, at my fingertips. Um, Crumple it up, really kind of maybe twist it, uh, maybe something like that. Um, and then maybe rearrange it, look at it, observe it, and um, then we're going to try and sketch it. So if you have a pencil, this is a speed sketch, so I'm only going to give us three minutes. Two minutes? Let's check in at two minutes. Let's see how it goes. Ready? Once you've got your newspaper, let's go. And really observe what's closer to you and what's farther to you. If it's intimidating to sketch the whole thing, maybe you just wanna sketch like one little corner of it. Um, and it's okay if it's sloppy, this is just for you. Oh, oh, that part goes down. Yes, that's a very good point. STEAM education is science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Uh, the maker movement is all kinds of like crafts and technology, really, really fascinating stuff. Do you see any like faces or shapes in the newspaper that you really like? Right, maybe it's, uh, I know a lot of puppeteers tend to see faces and things. So if you're seeing a face in your newspaper, you might be a, a puppeteer. Okay. Really pay attention to the shape of it, right? Places where it's off the table or uh, places where it sits on the table. It's, it's just kind of, we're just thinking about shapes. Like I said, two dimensions to three dimensions. Okay, oh, 30 more seconds. And I like to do these timed exercises just to give my brain a little bit of a warm up. Five, four, three, two, one. Pencils down. Let me see what you got. 
is what I got. See, it's just figuring it out. It doesn't have to look like anything. It's just for us. It's just an exercise. And that was my pile of newspaper. Okay, okay, not bad. Now, again, we're gonna take our pencils and paper, and what we're gonna do is draw a puppet. And this can be any sort of puppet that you would like to make. Um, if you have recycled materials and such uh, that, are, that we'll be working th with, maybe you wanna keep those shapes that are available to you in mind because this is a puppet that we're then going to build a sketch of out of recycled materials. This is gonna be a three-dimensional sketch and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means later. But for now, maybe just draw a puppet. Okay. Maybe, you know, I like to think about um, shapes like cylinders and cubes, stuff like that. Maybe think about where the eyes might go. Uh, it would be great if your puppet had arms and legs so that it could wiggle. That would help us out for exercises that we're planning later. This is a three-part series, this steam and puppetry exercise or workshop. I don't know, I've kind of been thinking about like a robot. Um, so I'm gonna draw a robot because I think that would be fun. And this can be a really, really simple sketch. I think part of designing a puppet is that um, when you first start to visualize it and the final version, those two things can be really far apart and that's okay. I think that the better that you get at making things and the better you get at designing things, the closer your uh, final pro product will be to uh, your initial idea. But there should always be room for them for um, them to change and for you to discover new things. Okay, just really quick, here's what I've got. It's just kind of a cylinder. He's got some uh, arms. Uh, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more to him actually, maybe like um, like dinosaur scales kind of mohawk thing, maybe like a little skirt, stuff like that. Because now what I really wanna talk about um, is how big it is. If you are making something, you wanna think about how small or how big it is. And maybe you don't have room on your paper. Maybe you're thinking, if you're designing something that's 10 feet tall, maybe you have a piece of paper that's 10 feet tall, but probably not, at least not right away. And so a good thing to do is maybe um, give yourself a scale where, 10, where one foot on, in real life equals one inch on the page. Does that make sense? Where if you're building something really big and you don't have... Uh, room for it on your paper, what you can do is draw it to scale, which means that um, you're translating something big and representing it with something small. And as long as that's consistent, then that's going to be a design that you're able to follow. Um, so let's measure. I've got this T-square that I really, really love. This is my favoriteest tool other than my awl. Um, and it has a level, um, but it also has this ruler um, that I'm gonna use. On a ruler, there are inches, and that tells you how big something is. And sometimes, if maybe, like, this is an activity you can do at home if you're really, really bored, is see how big everything in your house is. You can just measure. Like, I know that my uh, clothespin over here is three and a quarter inches, right? Three and a quarter inches tall. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's three and a quarter inches tall, um, I'm gonna think about how big my puppet should be by measuring it. So in my drawing, let me see, it's about five inches tall and I'm thinking I want it to be about, mm, 10 inches tall. So in that case, in my scale ratio, 
one inch on my paper is equal to two inches in real life. So if I draw a line that's three inches on my paper, that means in real life I want that thing to be six inches long. This is a little bit complicated, but I promise if you use it, you'll figure it, it will get a lot easier. Now, there are a lot of different things you can use to measure. This measures angles. Uh, your measuring tape measures things that are really, really long. Um, you can also make sure you have a right angle when you're using this. But if you don't have anything to measure with at home, there's a couple options. You can print out a ruler to scale or trace a ruler to scale. But another fun thing to do, and I think this is in the way of our um, kind of steam and technology, is you might make up a, your own scale, right? Who says that inches have to be the way that you measure things? Or centimeters or feet? You could say how many rolls of tape tall is something. And the way that you would do that is maybe just take a piece, take another piece of paper, measure how tall your tape is. I determined that it was about that tall. And then I have my own ruler. And you could re repeat that, right? On a piece of paper, you could mark out how long each tape measure, each tape roll is. And then you could say, oh, this table is eight tape rolls long. Um, and you can invent your own systems of measurement, which I think is kind of a fun way to spend in an afternoon if you're really interested in it. Because it could also be like uh, my fingernail, right? Or it could be, uh, it's as long as my earring or something like that. It can be something totally random. Great, so we're gonna go back to our sketch of our puppet that we drew and we're gonna think about how, uh, what, what do we want it to look like, right? And right now we're just thinking about shapes and forms. So I've got some recycled materials here and you know, mine is kind of like a cylinder, right? Oh, upside down. Mine's kind of like a cylinder. Um, and so I'm kind of interested in maybe using something like this, right? And like I said, I was already thinking about the things that I had available in my toolkit of recycled materials. But you can make any shape uh, out of recycled materials because they come in so many different shapes. Um, like, no, these are really great. So again, I'm just making a sketch. So maybe it's something like this and I have a mouth down here or maybe the mouth is up here, but I'm just sketching and attaching and figuring it out. And a good way to start doing that is to use, oh gosh, where's my masking tape? Uh, to use tape to try to attach different things. Um, cardboard is great for this as well. Uh, let me see. So maybe I want it like that sort of a thing. But it's an easy way to figure out kind of what a thing might look like. It's a good way to kind of prototype your ideas is to think about what shapes are available to you and what shapes you like to work with. Because it's really hard sometimes to go from two dimensions to three without any without any sense of how big or or how much space it might take up. So, okay, we've got that. Hmm, what else can I use? What else? Um, a lot of the time, you can also like crumple stuff up. Like maybe I know that I want it to have hair, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this on top. Or no, he had a skirt, so maybe I can add it on the bottom. And this is a great place to use masking tape. You could also use hot glue. You could use Elmer's or craft glue, um, glue dots, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, what else did I did I hope to use? Um, and you can go ahead and cut the different things too, right? Um, I was kind of interested in maybe having like a big smile, so I'm gonna very carefully cut this circle in half. Okay, like I said, very careful. Maybe not as careful. Okay. Whoa! And I'm gonna tape it, yeah, right there. And 
while we're uh, taping and putting things together, I want to talk a little bit about methods of attachment. There are a ton of ways that you can attach different things. This is one where I'm going to put the tape in a little bit of a roll, roll it up so I have two sides that are both sticky, and I'm going to put it on the back here. So it'll stick here. And this isn't like a permanent puppet solution. This is just something that lets us uh, see what it looks like, right? This is a, a 3D sketch. Okay, hmm, I guess it should have some eyes. Okay, I've got two bottle caps here. That kind of works. I'm gonna use my, try my mat, my um, scotch tape for this. And this is just part of the process, right? If this works for you and this is fun and exciting to you, that's great. If this is something that you think you have a different version of, go ahead and use your version. Um, but the important thing is knowing that it's okay to mess up. And actually it's like a really informative and really exciting opportunity when you mess up. Because when you mess up, it means you get to try again. And remember we talked about your initial idea maybe being kind of far from the finished project, it's okay for that to happen because in engineering and in puppet making and in art making, if it's worth doing, then it's worth being bad at at least a few times. And usually it's something where it goes like this in a cycle where you have an idea, you try the idea, you realize the idea has some problems and you go back, right? And you might go through that process a couple times. I'll make a chart next time. And then finally you get to that, uh, you get to your finished idea. But by that time, you've learned so much in this process that you'll probably have ideas for your next project. Um, and this is called an iterative process, uh, but we're gonna talk about that a lot in our next session. Um, but before we leave this session, what I'd really like to talk about, besides our beautiful 3D sketches, um, is methods of attachment. And we'll get back to this. Okay, so when I'm thinking about recycled materials, one thing that comes up pretty often is cardboard. Cardboard is a super versatile, super available material. You can make just about anything out of cardboard. Um, I've seen a spacesuit made out of cardboard, I've seen a ton of costumes, um, all sorts of different things. And so I kind of wanted to take this opportunity to talk just a little bit about cardboard. Maybe next, maybe we'll have a whole cardboard session someday. But in the meantime, ask a grown up if you can use um, a craft knife. And you really have to be super extra careful with these. Uh, maybe a grown up is going to do it for you. That's okay. As long as you're watching and you're there with them, you're part of that process too. And you're watching out for them the same way they would watch out for you when you get a chance to do it. So one thing that you can do with cardboard to attach it to more cardboard is something called a phalange. And I have a finished version here that I made before we started, but see how this would be an easy way to attach um, a difficult shape. So what I'll do is I wanna score the cardboard. And scoring the cardboard just means um, cutting it through just a little bit of it, you know? Not cutting through all the way. If I wanna cut through all the way, which I'm gonna do over here, I press a little bit harder. But if I, <laughs> I just threw that on the floor, <laughs> I'll clean up afterwards, I promise. But I'll just score right along here, like that. And I want mine to be pretty even. If it was a final project, I would measure more carefully. But for right now, this is enough. Then on the other side, what I'll do is um, go ahead and uh, score that. Then I want these guys underneath that score to be cut all the way through. And then when I roll it, I have something to attach it to. And that gives us more surface area to attach the glue to, which is always helpful. 
Um, another version of attaching cardboard is working with a slot. So what I've done here is I've cut just one slice halfway through one piece of cardboard and one slice halfway through another piece of cardboard. And now I can slot them together. And you can use these methods in your uh, 3D sketch. Another version that you might do is where you cut a hole in one that fits another piece. So these are just different ways of attaching cardboard to other pieces of cardboard that might be interesting if you're working on a 3D sketch. Back to our 3D sketch. Oh, I love that skirt. But if I look at my initial design, um, which was kind of to scale, um, he's still missing some arms. So hmm, I'm gonna look around me and figure out what I can use as arms. Okay, I have this, this cookie container. It might be noisy when I, when I cut it. Super noisy. But you kind of do this. Yeah, that'll work for now. And this is just to give us an idea of what we want to get to by the end. We're gonna have two more steam in puppetry workshops over the course of the next two weeks. We've got one on May 1st and one on May 6th. And those are both gonna be in the same kind of realm of how making and puppetry fit together. Um, and I think that'll be pretty fun. Uh, but like I said, um, this is just to give us an idea of what our final project will look like. It gives us a chance to figure out some of those problem areas and prototype some solutions. It lets us engage in the iterative process uh, before the stakes get high. So it, it lets you kind of, like I said, a, it's a sketch towards what we're working on. Um, it's just a method that, or a tool, or a method that you might find useful. I love to use recycled materials because they're super available as long as you give them a good rinse once you're, you know, after you, uh, you, usually they have food in them. Once you give them a good rinse, they're good to go and they're everywhere. And soon you'll start to be in super inspired by all the things that you see outside uh, or all the things that you see that could be recycled, you know. Before this, maybe you just saw an oatmeal canister, but maybe now you'll see an oatmeal canister and be like, oh, that's gonna make a really good puppet. Um, yeah, so I hope that this session has been uh, helpful and exciting. Um, we're just about finished here today. Like I thank you for joining us for the very first STEAM in Puppetry workshop at the Ballard Institute of Museum and Puppetry. Uh, my name is Felicia Cooper. I'm the graduate assistant and Yukon Puppet Arts student. Um, and let's see, the Ballard is really excited that we've been able to offer all of these workshops for free. Um, and if you'd like to donate in any capacity, uh, the link will be in the comment section, as well as on our Facebook page. Um, this evening, if you are interested in Indonesian puppetry uh, and shadow puppetry, we have an amazing forum and talk back uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, about the, the project Nicotiana, which is I think is really exciting and pretty unique. I don't think, um, uh, yeah, it's just pretty unique to Yukon and the Ballard Institute. But that's, that's all I've got for today. I'll be back on Friday at 2 p.m. and then next Wednesday at 2 p.m. So I hope to see you there. Um, keep making stuff and um, keep being, uh, being inventive and creative like I know you are. And we would love to see pictures, so go ahead and send them. Great, thank you so much, bye.